Taking over from Luigi Accardi now, we'll have Shiva Guru Shurafan. Followed by Peter Hislop is the second talk of this session, and then Luigi Accardi will be the first person to speak after lunch. The only mathematical talk before the party begins. Um, so without further ado, and to try and keep us on time, I'd like to welcome Shiva Guru Shurafan to tell us about stochastic Navier Stokes. Equations and its connection to infinite dimensional. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, happy 75th birthday for Professor Kalyan Sinha. And uh, actually, you know, I belong to not really the, the quantum probability community, even though uh, sometime in late 90s I bought Professor Bhattacharya's book and have <laughs> diligently read over the years and show uh, and notice some. Machinery, which can be probably uh, benefit the Navier Stokes community. By the way, you notice that I remove my tie and uh, blazer because I have a dual life, uh, but it's difficult to talk uh, and think uh, with uh, those things on. Um, so, what I will do is um, uh, I thought uh, uh, sort of an introduction or invitation, so to speak, uh, on. Um, uh, Navier Stokes equation and uh, stochastic Navier Stokes equation. Uh, and uh, uh, there are many issues, right? Uh, if you stay in deterministic, some of the big questions are one of the, of course, big questions is the global unique solubility in 3D. When you start asking control field equations, there are other uh, challenging questions. But when you go to stochasticity, uh, stochastic Navier Stokes, uh, a whole series of very interesting questions come. And in the last several years, uh, you may have noticed uh, many, many papers. And uh, so if you are an outsider, this functional analysis wilderness of Navier Stokes literature, uh, I thought maybe I'll cut through and show you some of, the, uh, some of the results and some of the structure. I picked one theme, essentially Navier Stokes equation and its connection to PDEs in infinite dimension. And uh, that might have some appeal to uh, this uh, mathematical community. So, so uh, what we will do is uh, we will start with uh, uh, the uh, what I call the abstract Navier Stokes equation. So that will look like um, du by uh, yeah du by dt plus mu of a u plus b u is equal to zero. T. So these are functions of. Uh, so you essentially have a, Hil a single Hilbert space, but uh, you can't work with single Hilbert space in Navier Stokes. Uh, I will clarify that. Uh, but for the moment, let's say that, you know you need this is for t positive and uh, u naught. Uh, it belongs to H. So what this hides is, is the, uh, the, the classical formulation of the Navier-Stokes equation uh, in, in, in coordinate system. So that looks like uh, this, right? So it is uh, du by dt plus u dot gradient u is equal to minus p gradient p plus nu Laplace u. And then div u is equal to 0. Um, you may ask what domain? That's actually not a big deal. 2D, it could be R2 and R3, because, uh, or maybe bounded domain, exterior domain, exterior domains exterior to a certain geometry, or um, domains um, which, uh, which has five, you know, outlets to infinity, which uh, we in the field call it uh, domains with non-compact uh, boundaries. And um, they have their own peculiarities uh, with regard to uh, various properties of the function spaces, uh, the spectrum and uh, the linearized operator and so forth. Um, so let's say this is for u of x t. Um, so x belongs to some uh, domain, let's call it g. Yeah. Rn. N is 2 or 3 is the most interesting one. People have looked at the uh, dimensions higher than uh, 3 dimension 4, for example. Um, and uh, so u of xt is called the velocity. And then p, 
of x t is called the pressure. Okay, so with this, uh, I I want to crowd the uh, so uh, so this is uh, defined in uh, think of it like a, you know a container where you uh, have liquid filled and you slush around and uh, the boundary so the boundary velocity is uh, zero and then u of x zero is equal to u naught x uh, is an initial field. Uh, but that's a classical form. So what we do is um, to go to the abstract form, what you do is you come up with some uh, function spaces. This uh, goes back to uh, the, the first uh, well-known uh, rigorous work uh, sort of uh, with completeness is due to Sean Leray in, uh, uh, in his thesis, so it is 1930s. And then uh, Eberhard Hoff, uh, 1950s, and O.A. Ladizanskaya, 1950s, a bit later. And then J. Leons and his uh, prodigy also contributed. So that function space uh, looks like this one. H is uh, U belong to L2, G. Uh, div of u is equal to 0. So what you do is you start with the square integrable function, so the, obviously this has to be uh, interpreted in the sense of distribution. Right? And then uh, u dot uh, n d g is 0. So that looks peculiar because if you are an L2 function, you cannot define boundary, but this additional condition allows you to uh, define that, also in the sense of distribution. And then uh, you come up with another function space V, which is uh, U belong to H uh, 1 0, G and D of U is equal to 0. Those two are essentially good enough to uh, uh, go to that framework. So, you know, this looks like a PDE, but that looks very much like an operator, you know, functional equation, so it's a lot easier to work with. Uh, so I had to define the operators A and B. And uh, this new is uh, just a number. So I used to work for the Navy. Well, not the military, but uh, uh, somehow I got this nice appointment uh, to do full-time research in San Diego Point Loma for many years. So at that time, I used to say for, for a submarine, uh, new is equal to 10 to the power minus uh, 10 or something like that. Very, very small. Right. So um, anyway, so so I need to go from here to uh, here to there. Um, it was uh, Leons and Prodi is uh, the ones uh, you know most uh, prominently uh, advocated that framework, by which has now become standard. They are the father Leons. Um, so so A is actually um, it is minus P H of Laplace U. They are P H is um, it's essentially the operator uh, projecting to H. So it's sometimes called Helmholtz uh, uh, projection. And B is, um, uh, so B of U, so A of U I should write. B of U is again projection of uh, U dot gradient U. And um, if I apply projection operator to the gradient B, that is zero because divergence free vector fields are orthogonal to gradients. So, uh, so what happens is uh, when you apply, take this equation and apply this projection, this term goes away. So essentially you have an e this equation. And uh, immediately uh, for large class of uh, domains G, uh, A is, uh, is uh, densely defined. But I don't need to say that this is a self adjoint operator. Uh, that generates a holomorphic semi group. Okay, so 
So this means that I can define this um, holomorphic semigroup exponential minus a of um, a t, and um, uh, so the, this is um, can is just a, um, essentially in the complex plane. You can actually show that it's uh, holomorphic in a sector like this. That's because the resolvent associated with this operator is. Um, uh, analytic um, in a sector in a region like that, so that uh, gives you a holomorphic semigroup. So that immediately gives you a good structure to deal with um, uh, this problem, right? So this part looks like a heat equation, right? Uh, everything is nice. So why is a million dollar? Uh, so that is because uh, this um, that's because of this operator. Which behaves the nonlinear term, which behaves differently for two and three dimension, and um, so to cut the long story short, um, it, it turns out that by just one, you know, you hit this by u, taken a L two in a product, and you can immediately show uh, this inequality. U t h squared plus two nu zero to t a half u of r h squared d, d of r uh, is equal to u naught h squared, OK? So well, just one integration by parts. It's because of this, uh, there's a very interesting property that uh, uh, b u, u h is 0. It's, a, it's an amazing property of the Navier-Stokes uh, term, so that when you take an L2 in a product, the results you get is exactly uh, the results of the heat equation. So, so this one immediately gives you a topology. Right? If I throw this away, notice that this is uniformly bounded. So you have the topology L infinity 0 t h. And then this one, if I throw that away, uh, it uh, gives a topology L2 0 t uh, v. Uh, it turns out that v is domain of a half. Um, you know, the, the Hilbert scale here comes immediately because um, A generates a holomorphic semigroup, so you can define its fractional powers and the negative and positive, so that defines uh, the function space. So this is, uh, these days it's uh, called Ledison scale space. I think it's uh, probably should be attributed to J.L. Leons and Eberhard Hoff. Uh, so, so the story goes like this. In 1951, uh, Hoff uh, proves that um, this, uh, uh, is, so once you have this uh, equality, any approximation to that, uh, this one, finite dimensional projection also satisfies this inequality. So Hoff, Eberhard Hoff proved that for two and three dimension, in a rather arbitrary geometry, so Eberhard Hoff and his, um, Um, uh, that uh, 2 and 3D, there exists a solution, a generalized solution, uh, to the Navier-Stokes equation um, with finite um, Lerzinska topology. Let's call it LD topology. Because it's um, easier to say that way. So, uh, so what is the result? So the three, two, and three dimension, there exists a solution. Uh, just that in uh, uh, two dimension, staying with this topology, you can prove uniqueness. In three dimension, staying with that topology, you cannot prove uniqueness. That's a sort of it's very easy to see, uh, easy to work it out and see. Is uh, so in three D, so two D. Uh, exactly following this topology in 1959, Leons and Prodi, I should say this, J.L. Leons, Father Leons and Gaviona Prodi, proved that uh, in 2D, uh, the above class is unique.
3D is open. So that is the Millennium Price problem. Right? It's very cleanly stated. The Millennium Price problem is that uh, the initial data is L2. No boundary. I don't need any other forcing. Um, we can uh, show that uh, 2D, 3D, 2 and 3D we have existence. There are uh, different ways of proving existence. R3 or so you can prove. Yeah, yeah irrespective of the domain. There are some restrictions, pipes and so forth. We can talk about the flow through pipes and so forth. Uh, but in general, for rather arbitrary domains, this is true. 2 and 3D. Uh, so the domain is not an issue. Uh, it, it comes in a different way. We can talk about it. Um, but um, so, um, so that's why I didn't make a big deal out of omega, what, what the domain looks like. Uh, the, re the difference is because uh, it's, it's, uh, the difference is because when you uh, try to prove uniqueness, you will write uh, the first equation for, let's say, for u1, the same equation for u2, and then you write the difference. And uh, so, since it's nonlinear, the difference doesn't satisfy the same equation. There's a term that comes in, so you try to estimate that term. Uh, using uh, uh, Holder inequalities and Gagliardo Nirenberg and so forth. Rather, that's what it was done 70, 80 years ago. We still don't know uh, to do better. That's because of this following. It's called the Gagliardo Nirenberg inequality. It actually, to be fair, it was before uh, they generalized it. Um, people attribute to Lenzenske and Linné and all, uh, all those people. For the case I am writing, is 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 the following: If you have a, a L4 norm, right? This is again arbitrary domain. So that's what. Uh, uh, so this is uh, less than equal to two cases: u of L2 half gradient of u of L2 half for n is equal to two, and u of uh, L2 one fourth. And gradient of u of L2, 3 fourth, for n is equal to 3. So that's what uh, is uh, turned out to be crucial for the fact that uh, the, you simply cannot overcome the geometry. Okay, so there's no other difficulty with respect to, uh, you know, whether you can put uh, smooth initial data, if you prove, uh, you know, start with the higher orders of all space initial data, you can prove local solo partition. You can start with fancy base of spaces. And but not uh, at all local uh, or more space. <coughs> and uh, I have also worked with a long time. Right. Um, so that's the millennium price problem. Essentially, you will find that when you try to take the difference, you will end up with a situation like this. Uh, if you write u is equal to two solutions, u1 minus u2. Uh, then uh, you can show that z of L2 at time squared is equal to z of uh, z naught of L2 squared exponential 0 to t gradient of u1 squared dr, this is r, for 2d. And uh, this is replaced by exponential 0 to t gradient of u of L2 fourth dr for n is equal to 3. Okay, so I came to talk about infinity dimension. I'm not there yet, but I just, uh, you know, I thought this is you. So, so you, you can immediately see how in the 2D the uh, story closes. Because you know that um, any solution, uh, when we prove uniqueness, has this norm finite. Right, that's the Hopf class solution. So you run to this and say, ah, this is finite, and therefore it is zero. Then this has to be zero. 2D is thus solved. That's the famous proof of Leonson problem. In three dimension, you do the same step, and you end up with four here. But within this class, you go and look and find that you don't have the integrability of the fourth. Uh, this is what for the nth stop. Okay. So 
You say, oh, because these people didn't know how to start with smoother data, so you start with H1 data, you only prove local control of the team. Okay? So that's where yeah, that's uh, uh, the Millennium Prize problem. And um, okay, now uh, the, the issue I wanted to talk is to go back and um, what happens um, uh, when you add the noise. Okay, so and um, so obviously, you know, all these these are very fundamental problems, so they all have long histories. And um, so if I now I want to randomize the situation. It was historically done in many different contexts, uh, you know, statistical theory of evolution and so forth. So the first effort is about, again equal to uh, by Eberhard Hoff. So Eberhard Hoff, 1952, because at that time, uh, so he considered this problem. It, that looks like deterministic, right? belongs to H, uh, but he said, okay, suppose um, instead mu naught is uh, given by a probability measure, right? So the law of um, u naught uh, is given by a probability measure uh, that defines on uh, Borel algebras uh, of this Hilbert space. So, and then how does this measure propagates? So that's the, um, uh, in, in, in fluid mechanics, that is the theory of uh, statistical solutions. Uh, you know, uh, goes back to G.I. Taylor and uh, Mogorov looked at the stationary uh, solutions and so forth. So that's, um, um, I, will, I will come back to Hoff's uh, formulation in a moment uh, once I go to the stochastic problem, right? So, it's important to leave, um, so remember this, that the 2D, you know, this, uh, this story becomes what's called a pathwise solution in, in the stochastic, once you go to the stochastic, because one day we have randomized the problem. Uh, and the, the energy estimate I showed uh, can be used to prove existence of martingale solutions. It means the probability loss uh, defined on uh, regarding this as the path space. Okay, so that's, um, uh, so when I, so there were many other people looked at, but when I went uh, to, into the field, I had this single-minded, is that, what is the corresponding stochastic counterpart of Hoff, Leons, and Prodi? Right, the picture I showed. Uh, that's the condition I was most interested in. A uh, lot of very smart mathematicians uh, contributed to this uh, subject, so um, I want to be careful when I, say who and who did what. <clears throat> so you may ask, uh, okay, what if uh, there's a, so that's uh, Hoff's uh, uh, statement of uh, starting with um, uh, uh, initial data that is uh, from probabilistic. How about if you add the uh, noise? What kind of noise you can add? Gaussian noise you can add. Um, so that, uh, st uh, st uh, you know, to be honest, it started with uh, Eugene Novikov. He's more of a, of a theoretical fluid mechanics in 1963. Uh, but he only derived the Kolmogorov equation. Uh, the rigorous work was started with uh, Ben Susan and Kim Wong. So um, uh, Alan Ben Susan, I even, what happens when you go into administration now you forgot how to spell <laughs> ben uh, and Simon in 1973 uh, this paper actually was in French so I had to take a great deal of effort to get read it so they they looked at roughly the case uh, we are going to describe but not quite the case um, uh, I described so you know that when we want to have 
uh, put this in the stochastic form, you want to write it in the Ito form. So here is the, uh, so essentially you multiply through because the right hand side should look like um, stochastic integral. So you write nu of a of u plus b of u dt is equal to, let's uh, put dw now, right? So I want to first uh, explain the functional framework uh, associated with this uh, uh, this problem. So you can still regard q naught in h. So we I, let's stay close, very close to the Lyrae Hoff um, Leon's Prodi picture, so that you don't see everybody coming up with their own. Uh, so uh, the first thing you use, uh, you are going to have is what's the counterpart of this one, right? What's the counterpart of uh, this? And uh, what is W? Right, and um, when I used to, I used to spend time with uh, Professor Kalyanpur uh, sitting down and discussing in Chapel Hill. So he wants to, he doesn't like this. He would uh, want me to write uh, this as a Brownian sheet and uh, show the <laughs> uh, time difference, you know, time derivatives and so forth. Okay, so essentially we, uh, the first uh, thing I wanted to show is that we have an exact part of um, this and that, in, uh, provided W has uh, uh, the, the, some properties. And then I will uh, start asking questions of, um, uh, can we talk about optimal stopping that leads to a, a variational inequality in infinite dimensions? Can you talk about impulse control? which uh, leads to a quasi-variational inequality in infinite dimensions. And, um, and then uh, control type questions and so forth, non-linear filtering. Um, okay, so the first result, I need to characterize W. So let's take W. Uh, in the simplest case, more general ones, uh, you know, he has uh, actually Levy. Um, I spent time on, you know, writing about those uh, all as well. So let uh, W key B and H value mean of process. So need to say something about that. So so we will say let um, W be an H valued uh, mean of process. Uh, with uh, trace class covariance operator Q. So this means that um, you know expectation of um, W T acting on some function phi take an inner product W tau acting on some function chi take an inner product. So now you get to scale a Brownian motions, and this will be equal to T, smallest of that, and the operator Q acting on phi, psi, H, and with trace of Q finite. Okay, so let's uh, work with that. Then it can be shown uh, by applying Ito formula So apply Ito, um, it's not applied formally, there is actually rigorously justified if there are unbounded operators come in. Uh, for a function, let's say f u is equal to u of h squared. Because I want to generate uh, the, the counterpart of just multiplying by, you know, taking an inner product with u is uh, applying Ito formula to that. Um, so I apply Ito formula and then take expectation. So I, you know, when you apply Ito formula, I uh, get a martingale term. Uh, particularly this one, I get a global martingale term. If I have a multiplicative noise, then I get a local martingale term. You need to work, so I, say, I had to say some more. So, but you, uh, you apply the Ito formula and take expectation. Then you wipe out the martingale term 
and then you end up with x sub ut h squared plus mu 0 t radiant u r. So did they write a half? Let's write a half. They are saying u of r dr uh, is equal to expectation of um, u naught h squared plus the final time t times trace of q. It's a very beautiful formula it comes up. This essential in exact counterpart, which is what uh, the, the theory, the aspect of the theory or the approach, uh, I like because then you get the exact counterpart of the, the original Leon's you know, uh, half work. What is the difference? There's an expectation here, and there's one more difference. We have this term t times trace q, the energy contribution from the noise. And that also explains why I have this condition. OK? So if I put q is equal to i, it's an open problem. That's why you see many, many papers in stochastic Navier-Stokes, but uh, the moment you put q is equal to i, things get by thought you don't have. Uh, it's because, um, you know, it's um, under this condition you have, you can, there is a, you know, your um, Q uh, has eigenvalues, so you, they are lambda E and PI, then the WT can be expanded. Square root of lambda I, PI, uh, times uh, one dimensional Brownian motions, right? So you have that nice representation and uh, the, the, the fact that the sum of uh, eigenvalues is finite, it helps you to, uh, so you have, uh, so if the trace Q is finite, then uh, you get two results. The, the counterpart of uh, uh, Hoff's results, uh, that uh, uh, there exists a marginal solution uh, to this problem. So I'll tell you how that uh, I, uh, the, the functional fr framework I set up for that. So first, uh, you can prove. Uh, first, you can prove that uh, uh, there exists a pathwise solution in uh, Lenzenski topology uh, that is unique. Uh, in 2D. So that results is actually due to uh, J.L. Menaldi and myself. So to prove exactly in the, in the topology, we use what's called the local monotonicity property of uh, this operator. This operator is not uh, maximally monotone like in Minty Browder theory because then uh, everything is done. You have global solvable. But it's only locally monotone and in some L4 balls and so forth. So you can complete that. And, um, and then the counterpart of Hoff's results, uh, in order to do that, I need to come up with the uh, path space, which I will take very much similar to uh, the path space I took over there, I mean, of a half, Lenzen scale. So the Lenzen scale space, which was uh, on the PDE side, become my omega, you know, the, uh, on which I define the uh, probability measures. So, so then I will have a probability measure P that defines on uh, uh, borrowed sets of omega uh, into uh, 0, 1, such that the equation is satisfied, uh, so star is satisfied, satisfied in the sense of Crook and Verden. So Stroke and Verden's uh, is the paradigm is that um, instead of looking for pathwise solution, you look for the property measure defined on the path space with um, sigma algebra is defined on that and the canonical filtration. Uh, you show that uh, for that property measure, you know, this part, uh, if you move, you keep this part. 
is a morning meal. So that will, you can, yes. Why we don't work with uh, spatial continuous functions because ball in the spatial continuous function are not uh, big star compact, right? So it is not uh, useful. Um, actually, I also had actually intersection with Skorohov space, domain of a minus half. Um, so essentially, you have big topology here, big stop, this big star here, because ball, a ball in so that is big star compact. And that's the reason why we don't work with uh, continuous function. And uh, weak topology here. So the intersection, actually, uh, you know, you, uh, if you want to apply approximations and take limits, you need um, Prokhorov theorem. But the Prokhorov theorem is not useful here because this is not Polish. So this is actually called losing space. So that's when I first uh, started reading probably the Bhattasar in this book uh, where the extension, Vardarajan's famous extension of Prokhorov theorem to losing space is uh, described in Vardarajan's uh, uh, books. Uh, good place to read. And um, <coughs> anyway, so you can actually show that uh, there exists a uh, uh, probability measure defined on, uh, uh, on the space-time topology such that this is a, you know, this solves a morning hill problem. In uh, fluid mechanics, that is called space-time statistical solutions. Okay? But in stochastic analysis, it's called the Martin Hill solutions. So, so you can prove that the Martin Hill solution exists for 3D, just like, uh, but uh, is the Martin Hill solution unique? Uh, the only method I knew how to solve, and this is what uh, other people use, going back to Ben Susan and Timon, Flandoli and others, is, is to resort to what's called the Yamada Watanabe technique. So this means that if you know this pathway is unique, and if you have the Martin Hill solution, then the Martin Hill solution is unique. But um, uh, so that, that means that you can, you know, you go back to pathwise, you go back to deterministic problem in essence. Unless it's a multiplicative noise, then you do a little bit more work. Because when you subtract, the noise goes away in a simpler setting. So it's pathwise unique in 2D. The 3D looks very much similar to uh, of construction, just that you know you work with prob uh, probability measures instead of uh, sequences uh, going to uh, limit. This time you have probability measures converging. So good. That's the introduction I wanted to give. How many minutes I have? Huh? One minute. I'll take two. Less questions. Pardon? You'll have less questions. Yeah. No. No. No questions. So let's let's go to. Um, I wanted to talk about. So once you have, um, well, it's, it's okay. I, I think the justice is done in the sense of uh, explaining the Navier-Stokes theory. Uh, so you go to stochastic Navier-Stokes. Then of course solvability. That's a question you can ask, and which I just answered. The other one is invariant measures. And uh, the God city. The third one is um, large deviation. So this um, Sundaran, Padmanabh and Sundaran I did this work for zero noise problem. After that, uh, Donska Varadhan type uh, results was also done by others. Uh, the other question you can ask is um, a stopping time problem and impulse control. And finally, nonlinear filtering. Okay. Okay. So let's. Um, uh, I want to uh, go to the infinite dimensional problem and um, say a few words because the ergodicity itself will take some time to talk. So let's look at this operator. Let me call it n. Uh, n of phi, that looks like this. Trace of q, um, dxx phi, 
um, minus ax plus b of x dx of t. So, you know, if you go back and if I don't have the stochastic nonlinear Stokes equation, if I don't have that term, the Kolmogorov operator looks like this. Right? So, when I have this drift, then the Kolmogorov operator will be the drift multiplied by the first derivative. Right? So, this is essentially the backward uh, Kolmogorov or the generator of the semi proof, the formal generator of the semi proof. So, so, the issues I have uh, in mind are. Uh, for example, if I jump and ask the stopping time problem, then I get actually a variational inequality. So the, the first question you ask is, of course, d phi by dt uh, is equal to n of phi, a solvability problem, right? Uh, and then the second question I ask is, uh, if it is an optimal stopping, then I have also some g, and this is some g, so I have a variational inequality uh, connected to that, and so that can be translated into translated into a problem like this, dp by dt, uh, so minus minus n of phi plus uh, n of k of phi belongs to 0. So 0 belongs to it. This is essentially the normal cone associated with this second constraint. So for example, one of the uh, developments uh, we had Babu and I did, the Babu, <coughs> is the following. You uh, you show that uh, this operator uh, is, um, so this uh, combined operator, which we call script A, script A of phi, so script A of phi is M accretive in L2 mu of H. And uh, that's how we solve the, this problem. So, uh, you know, that's like um, maximal monotone operators in, uh, in PDE theory. Uh, so what is this mu? This mu is the invariant measure associated with uh, uh, the, this stochastic evolution. So since it's one minute, I'll say one minute uh, story about invariant measure and I'll finish. Okay? And uh, so the type of uh, questions I have will usually center around that op uh, operator. So this is what I came to say, speak about. Um, got carried away about millennium <laughs> prices. So that's about this infinite dimensional PDE because uh, here the little x is, uh, belongs to the Hilbert space. So let's, uh, uh, I say a few words about the invariant measure uh, and ergodicity and then uh, uh, we'll quit. So let's uh, define an uh, operator PT acting on phi as uh, expectation of um, P acting on the solution of the Navier Stokes, stochastic Navier Stokes. Okay? Then we can show, show that uh, Pt maps continuous bounded functions into continuous bounded functions. So it is Feller semi group. So the stochastic Navier Stokes. The, it uh, generates a fellow semi group in the 2D case. Right? So we need actually, so there's a famous paper by uh, Flandoli and Maslowski. It showed that if you have, if P uh, T is strong fellow and irreducible. Uh, then the invariant measure is uh, measure is unique. So the by the way, the existence of invariant measure essentially follows uh, this uh, uh, the corresponding energy estimate I showed. So with that, uh, the 
Uh, you can use some compactness theorem and they show that there is a measure. Just that they, there, are, there are many. In fact, uh, you know that steady Navier stores has many solutions. Okay, the plugin is well known. And therefore, if you have a direct measure sitting on a steady solution in Navier store, you have many solutions. So you know that the invariant measure is not unique Navier stores. And uh, the strong fuller property is actually PT maps uh, bounded functions into continuous functions. So that is uh, the irreducibility, of course, um, is uh, easier to prove. That's connected to controllability of the corresponding deterministic problem. The strong feather doesn't come easily. So they put a lot of conditions on the, uh, with respect to this uh, cube. Right? I won't write it down here. Something to do with non -de is degenerate, but at the same time, non degenerate. That was relaxed by Martin Herrer, actually, in, uh, in uh, his work, signal work. Uh, he showed that you only need to have four modes in that expansion I showed. You only need to have four modes. So he replaced uh, the fella with uh, what's called asymptotic strong fella. Uh, so this is a strong fella. You know, regular fella is goes from bounded to continuous to continuous function. Strong fella goes from borel function, bounded borel function to continuous. So it has a smoothing property. Anyway, so we need to extend that semi-group to these uh, function spaces, right? So uh, with the ones you will know that the invariant measures are unique, and then you can use that to uh, essentially bring the well-known PD theory, monotone operators, nonlinear semigroups, and so forth in this space for the infinite dimensional problem, and thereby answering some of the questions related to controls and uh, uh, optimal stopping and so forth. This is the idea I want to uh, so. So the, the, the issue is open uh, the moment you don't have an invariant measure. And uh, so you may ask, uh, why did you use the invariant measure? Why don't you use Gauss measure? Then you can integrate by parts and so forth. But uh, for Gauss measure, you know, there's one thing I didn't tell you. If, if you know, studied you know, from Parsi semi-group, the first thing you start is you need the closure of the operator. We don't know whether the operator is closed if you use uh, Gauss measure here. I know Rockner wrote many papers, but I don't think he proved. The operator is closed. So if you if you don't have a generator that is closed, the semi-group uh, Hili Yoshida type uh, things you can't uh, extend. Never mind the more powerful Crandall Ligato Komurakato we used here. When you have a maximal monotone, you know normal cone is maximal monotone. So the sum is maximal monotone by some theorems of Rockefeller and so forth. Anyway, so that I just wanted to give an idea of uh, the type of machinery comes in uh, when you ask. Uh, Questions of this type, questions of filtering, questions of control, optimal stopping, and so forth uh, for stochastic numbing stops. Thank you very much. So we, we have something in the order of minus four minutes for questions. <laughs>